Let's learn how to calculate return on investment and residual income. So before we calculate ROI and residual income, let's have a look at the formula used to calculate ROI and RI. So return on investment is divisional profit divided by divisional investment into 100. Divisional profit simply means profit before interest and tax and taking into account all controllable elements to arrive at the divisional profit. So we need to make sure that any other head office costs or any expenses which were not in the control of the divisional managers would be excluded from this divisional profit. Divisional investments are nothing but the net assets employed in the division and exactly the same idea that these are referring to those net assets which are under the direct control of the divisional head or divisional manager. Once we calculate ROI, if ROI of a division is greater than the head of his target or cost of capital, this simply reflects a good performance on behalf of the division otherwise that represents poor performance now the residual income a residual income equals to divisional profit minus net assets times by cost of capital given as a percentage if residual income of a division is positive this reflects good performance and whenever the residual income on your calculator comes out to be negative that is simply reflecting a poor performance. So residual income is actually value addition made by a division towards the shareholdings of the organization. Again, the same two common things, divisional profit and net assets, which are also used in return on investment. So these remain the same element as before. So let's have a look at this example management of a company is considering to invest $4 million in a division. The investment would expand operational capacity of the division. It is expected to generate $2 million per annum over the next four years before any depreciation. After four years, the investment will have a residual value of $1 million. Head office has set a target ROI of 30% and cost of capital is 20%. Depreciation is calculated using straight line method. Requirement is calculate the return on investment and residual income for each of the first two years. So once we would learn how to calculate ROI and RI for the first two years, then it is simply the same process which you can continue for the th year three, four and as much required in the project. So return on investment, quickly have a look at the formula which we've seen before. Now all we need to do is extract the relevant figures from the example. So divisional profit and divisional net assets or investment. Residual value, residual income, uh, I can change in here, it's not residual value, it's called as residual income. Residual income is divisional profit minus net assets times cost of capital. So now we need to pick up the numbers. So here we go, profit before depreciation, which is the net cash flow of $2 million. This is before depreciation. So now we need to subtract the depreciation charges per annum. So annual depreciation based upon the straight line method is cost minus residual value divided by the useful life. And then, hey presto, we get the annual profit after depreciation because there are no other things given in the example, so we will consider that is the controllable profit. The net assets, the total investment in this project is $4 million and annual depreciation is taken away, giving us the net book value of $3.25 million. Now this happens at the end of the year. Now this closing balance of $3.25 million becomes the opening balance of the next year then we take away the depreciation for the year arriving at the net book value at the end of the second year now remember please unless, uh, unless or otherwise stated always use the opening value of the net assets to calculate roi and ri 
So ROI, first of all, 1.25 million divided by 4 million times by 100, so which gives us 31.25%. In the second year, profit divided by the investment. And we end up with a return on investment. Now here, before we move on to the residual income, did you notice head office target was 30%. If I take you back in here, the head office had set a target return on investment of 30% from each division. So it looks like both years were quite good for this division. In the first year, they achieved the head office benchmark of 30%, even better than that. And it has improved in the second year. Then we are looking at re residual income. So profit minus investment times by cost of capital, which gives us a positive 0.45 million dollars. Now this figure is positive on your calculator. Then in the second year, it would be the same calculation, putting the different numbers and we get 0 0.6 million dollars of the residual income. And again, as residual income is being positive, so as it's an absolute measure, we can say on its own, the residual income was a value addition generated by this division for the entire organization. Thank you.